You remember this can. The sweet sauce, the soft noodle, this was childhood. Mm. But did you know that Chef Boyardee was an actual chef? He was. His name was Hector, and he made a mean pasta sauce. But it wasn't Hector's sauce that made Chef Boyardee the household name that it is today. You can thank the US military for that. In the 1930s, Hector Boyardee opened up an Italian restaurant in Ohio, and everyone was like, Oh my god, I love your sauce! So he started selling it, and he sold a lot of it. A lot, a lot. By 1938, he had opened up his own factory, selling his sauce and pasta, can. Ask for Chef Boyardee's spaghetti dinner. Only about 15 cents a serving. Then, World War II happened, and a phone call was made. The US military called Hector and said something like, Help make food for the troops. He already had the canning infrastructure, so Hector said, yeah, all right. His company shifted from a civilian consumer base to a military one. Chef Boyardee became the largest supplier of rations to US and allied forces. Production was happening 24-7. By the end of the war, the factory was too large, and the military demand no longer existed. Hector didn't know what to do. So he sold it to this large company called American Home Products, who were all like, We got this. They quickly rebranded and distributed the can as easy-to-make at-home meals and filled supermarket shelves across the United States. So today, when we buy Chef Boyardee, we're actually eating rebranded World War II field rations. Yep. There are countless Chinatowns all over the world, and New York boasts one of the most famous, full of cheap produce, fish markets, and of course, a plethora of Chinese food. But if you hop on the one train, take it to the Upper West Side, you'll find a Chinese restaurant like no other, where half the menu is something else. Chuleta, chicharrones, ropa vieja, tostone, arroz y frijol. This is La Caridad 78, New York's last Cuban Chinese restaurant. Comida china y criolla. Criolla. How did this unlikely culinary duo come to be? That's a great question. Enter Sam Lee. Sorry, with my wife. When my father came over here, oh, he started uh, like his own restaurant with uh, you know Cuban spices and also the Chinese food mixed together. Hundreds of thousands of Chinese came to Cuba in the 19th and early 20th century, establishing a strong presence on the island. But when Castro came to power, most Chinese immigrants like Sam's father left, many of them coming to the U.S. And thus, Cuban Chinese food was born. Yeah, I would say La Calidad restaurant is not a restaurant. It's a kitchen for Upper West Siders. We have oxtail, raw baveja, which is like a shredded beef. At the same time, we serve Chinese food. Either cooked from, uh, you know, mainly from China, and they learned the trade when they got here, and they become very good. So are there any Cuban-born workers left? I still have one Cuban worker working for me. <laughs> My name is Antonio Wong. I work in the Calidad. I started in 1986. I'm born in Havana, Cuba in 1951. I'm the last Cuban working in the restaurant. While Cuban Chinese culture is fading, La Caridad is a snapshot of a strange moment in time where two vastly different cultures merge together. The Cuban Chinese people getting older and they don't have any younger people to take over. I myself feel like I owe my father who started this restaurant. So I want to try to make sure that I carry on the tradition for him. Mi nombre es Alejandro Olmedo. Soy cantante de ópera. Yo he cantado en 64 países por todo el mundo. Mi nombre es Tora y yo soy cantante de La gente dice que es absurdo cantar ópera aquí en, en Cape Town, pero es increíble porque la gente le gusta.
todos los lunes aquí en el Shanghai Moon Restaurante cantamos a las 7 de la noche ópera. Invitamos como siempre cantantes y vienen sopranos, barítonos, tenores y hacemos una buena fiesta aquí y la pasamos maravilloso. Antes de yo estar aquí en este restaurante, estaba en Rusia cantando por varios años. Canté 547 conciertos por toda Rusia, como en 150 ciudades. Empecé a cantar aquí porque esto, eh, yo estaba sin hacer nada, eh, de pronto ya no tenía un concierto. Alejandro es un hombre que mi hermano coreano, Tora Lee, eh, es mi mejor amigo, número uno. Y estoy muy contento, muy agradecido con Mr. G de que yo tenga ese privilegio de, de cantar y de, de vivir de la ópera, de mi canto. Yo a Alexander que el Señor me ha dado un buen voz, 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 un yo cuando canto en un gran teatro, canto con pasión, con la verdad, con todo mi corazón. Y cuando canto en un restaurante, igual. Uno, y donde sea, yo tengo que cantar con todo, con todo. I have one job, making the best clothing in the world. My name is Martin Greenfield. I used to be Maximilian Grunfeld when I was born, but we, I changed it to make it American because I love this country. <laughs> My craft is very difficult to define because it's many things. I am a maker of clothing. I know how to measure. I know how to fit people. Very few people could match me. I was responsible for all the presidents. Clinton I measured in the White House, Obama I measured in the White House, so then I made them perfect suits, we never had to fix nothing. My life was a sad life before I came to America, because I lost my family. I was left alone, everybody was dead. We were occupied, Auschwitz was a month later, I was in the concentration camp a year and two months. It was my second day in Auschwitz. There was no more names in the concentration camp, only numbers. When they called me, they sent me to a tailor. The head tailor spoke my language. He was Jewish. They asked me, are you a tailor? No. I said, if you could show me how to make the collar. He says, I'll make you a collar. Show me how to make a collar. The pain is still in my heart about my family. I still dream about my family, like they're alive. But on the outside, you will never know. I didn't think I was gonna survive. I was liberated by Eisenhower. General Eisenhower came in when I was 15 and a half years old. And when they walked in, I shook his hand, crying. You saved my life. I came to America September 18, 1947. They gave me the job as a tailor. I told my boss, listen, Eisenhower liberated me. I want you to make him a trippy suit like I wear myself. He liked it. Once he had the first three-piece suit, from then on you didn't see Eisenhower and nothing but three-piece suit. So that's how it started. I made sure we dressed all the presidents. Uh, with Obama, first he wanted me to copy a suit. I don't copy anybody. Everybody copies my suit. So uh, if he wants me to make something, I have to measure. 
Next day, he sends an email, it'll be a pleasure to meet you there. I'm happy when I'm in the factory. My job is the most important thing in my life. Quality is so important to me because I know that's what kept me in business and that's why I'm here talking to you. My mom is an amazing person. Janet is very alegre, very cariñosa. Jeanette Castagnon and Rosario Vargas are a mother and daughter separated by a border. One living in San Diego and the other in Mexico. I came from Mexico 2006 because I want to get another opportunity for my kids. Cuando se fue no en sí no me despedí de ella. Pensé que Iba a ser breve el que la volviera a ver. I don't have the permission to cross the border, the line. From the last year and a half, I see my mom to the fence. At the site of a binational park in San Diego, the U.S. Border Patrol allows families to meet. On the weekends, loved ones enter the park and walk directly up to the border, a steel fence. This gives families on both sides a rare opportunity to see and speak to each other. Lo veo el cerco, aparte de que me da tristeza, me da alegría porque voy a ver a mi hija. You know, you're gonna see your mom, you're gonna see your family, but the fence only have a tiny holes. And my mom sometimes put the finger in the tiny hole. I just a little touch it, just touch it. Or sometimes I give you a kiss. Está muy cerca y a la vez tan lejos. Pero me he puesto tan mal la hija, quién sabe. Ma, no pienses así, ma, por favor. Como siempre te digo, ma, te quiero mucho, ma. On April 30th, for the third time ever, authorities agree to open the door, allowing select families a brief moment to embrace. Each of them will only have three minutes. Voy a estar, no sé cómo me vaya a sentir el, al momento de que la pueda abrazar, de que pueda estar junto a ella. Right now, I feel so happy because I'm waiting. I'm waiting so much this moment. Ever, we have the opportunity to have this door open. I feel I, incredible. She was so happy. She was so sweet with me. She told me, I love you, mommy. I love you so much. I love you, I love you. 